All right, guys, thanks for joining us on another video on Guardian Safe and Locks uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we have, today we have a customer provided simplex lock. They brought in the simplex lock. They do not have a working code for it. They want us to, to make a working code for it. So whenever you have a simplex lock like, like this and you lose the combination, unfortunately, the only way to fix that is to take apart the whole lock, take off all the arm assembly, take the lock body out and basically override everything, release it so you can clear the gears and rechange the combination. So it's about a 45 minute to an hour process depending on if you've done it before, what complications you run across, things like that. So let's go ahead and get into it and I'll uh, show you how to change these um, back to a working code once you've lost the code. All right, so I've got the back of the lock here. I'm gonna, the, it gives you instructions in, in the book on how to do it. If you're not a locksmith and you don't have the mechanical schools and, uh, skills of doing this kind of thing, I, I'd be very hesitant in trying this on your own. Um, but if you feel like you wanna try, this is how you do it. So it gives you the instructions in here. The pictures are kind of limited. That's why I'm saying you as a professional. But anyway, we'll go whatever, one at a time here. So basically it says remove the, the back plate, this whole back plate from the lock. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're gonna take those six screws out. Okay. Now, if this is under warranty and you do this, it will void the warranty. Fortunately, the customer has already voided the warranty and I already called him about it before I'm opening this up and let him know that, hey, even though the sticker was off before, which voids the warranty, me opening this up is also going to void the warranty. So I made sure I covered that with the customer first, which he's okay with it. He's actually a contractor, so he's having us do this. Oops. And usually when servicing these simplexes, there's only two different parts that really most locksmiths even attempt to replace if these things go bad. And that's the arms and the, the lock body itself, which is what we're gonna be resetting. Now, other than that, if it goes, something breaks in it, usually we just replace it. So you pull this off and you wanna look at exactly how everything is being pulled apart when you do this. Okay, so I'm gonna set this just like that and pull this up straight up. Okay, straight up. So the half moon is straight up on top. That's straight up. And this is just like that. I'm not moving anything. Exactly like that. Now, a little different. So this one looks different than the, the lever one that I've actually worked on before now, just by looking quickly here. Yeah, because if you look in here, if you look closely here, you see how there's the arms there. And then there's the arms there. This is, they're called the arms. So the arms are one of the things that can go bad. The other part is the lock body, which is this. That's the lock body. And those are the arms. But in this case, you don't have, I don't know if he has the right instructions for this one actually, because it has a lever on it, see? It's the L1, 1000. But this one has a whole different setup because this is what it actually looks like on the ones that I'm familiar with, the lever one. So right away, right now, I'm noticing something different. But anyway, if you're trying to replace these, this is the arm linkage set. I think that's what they call it, the arm linkage set. You get this right here replaced, this whole arm set, it goes up underneath. And then this is the lock body right here. This whole long piece is the part that we need to get to. So let's go ahead and break that down. Before we keep going on though, I do wanna look, I'm gonna take a second here. I'm gonna look up and see if there's different instructions for this because this is, does not follow the standard one that I've seen before. I'm sure it's pretty much the same. So I'm gonna take a look at that first. Okay, so after briefly looking at this, I decided not to go online and look for a uh, different instruction because usually you have to take this apart, break it all down. Well, I noticed that if I just lift that up and move it over, it actually comes off pretty simple. The other one does not do that. You have to literally take all the linkage arms off, remember the positioning you have it in, put it back in the exact same positioning. On, um, I'm guessing it's because this is a knob function versus a lever. Um, that could be the reason, don't know. I've, this is the first time I've seen this particular setup. And this has a date of 2019 on it. So unless this is the new way it's been doing it, but the instructions still show that. So anyway, all right. So I could just leave that there. I don't have to mess with this. That's not a usual case. So now that I know that, I just need to get this body out of here. So this whole little square piece right here. So I'm going to just take out that screw up here that holds it in place.
And that one, if I can get to it, which I have to get a small little Phillips. There we go. It's just a tight fit in there. There we go. Okay. And then I just lift the body up just like that. See the buttons? I'm gonna set it right back down. I'm just gonna get my screws out of here. Did the other one come out with it? Yeah, I did. Okay. So there's that screw and the other one is right there. Okay. So I'm gonna set that aside. But if you notice, these just, they just sit in there, see? Okay, set that aside. That's something that wasn't on there last time as well. All right, so remove the two Phillips screws. We didn't have to do that because there's a different, there's a different setup in here. It's telling you how to remove the arms and everything. So I'm gonna skip all removing the arms and get to just the fact of where I'm actually working on this. So let's see here. Put the two chamber links off the control shaft. That's done. Remove the combination chamber, which is this, by removing the two screws. And then it says removed shaft bushing C from control shaft. Okay, with that, what they're talking about by that, I should be talking about this little clip on here, I believe. Let me see what their picture is saying. They said C, which the C I'm looking at doesn't. Oh, okay, they were talking about taking that off of there. Okay, that's done too. Place a small screwdriver on the edge of the three-sided dust cover and push down on the screwdriver. Push, place a small screwdriver on the edge of the three-sided dust cover, which I think it's talking about this, because this is the dust cover. Well, this one has another cover on top of it. So these instructions are not actually exactly for this, it looks like, but the customer dropped it off with it. And I'm going to, I'm wondering what that's in there for, though. It's making me nervous. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to remove that off of it. And you can get these new lock packs, too. So if you needed to replace it, you can just buy a whole new lock pack. And you can buy a new set of arms, new lock pack, just put them in, especially if it's, it has more of a problem than just a lost combination. So anyway, I'm trying to remember how this went on so I can put it back on and get done, which I've got that now. This is your lock body, whatever you call it. Um, and they are handed too. So if you're going to be ordering one and say, hey, I need a new, you know, combination pack for, you know, Simplex L1000. They'll say, okay, what hand do you need? Left hand or right hand? So you will have to know that as well. Okay. Anyway, so now I've got this ready to go. So it says, Place a small screwdriver, remove the dust cover. The cover should pop loose. Once it does, pull the cover off of the combination chamber. So, flathead here. Flathead there, pop that up. And pop that up. There you go, okay? So, this is what I'm looking at. Told you to call a locksmith. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's there. Okay, so now that I've got the, the cover off here, um, basically what I have to do is, is I have to look at these gears. If you look real close, I'm gonna let you see. You see how that gear lines up with that fence so that fence can go in there. When they all line up correctly, when you turn the lock, it pulls them up and they all go into the slots. But you can tell right now, only one of them is lined up correctly and the rest of them aren't. So anyway, that's what we're trying to do. And you can see that some of them, like this one's right there, that one's close, that one's a little farther, that one's a little farther, this one's close, this one's even farther, and that one's farther. So you have to look up in there and, and look to do this, but I'll, I'll go over that here right now. So basically what you have to do now is, after I've cleared the code, which I just take this clockwise and clears the code. So now it's all clear, just like grabbing the lever outside and going ch -ch -ch, clearing it. Okay. So I have to go in order now. I have to depress the buttons that interact with the gears until I get them all to line up by looking at the, going from the farthest 
away from lining up to to the closest that are lining up. Now, any that are already lined up, you completely ignore. It's not part of the lock. So right now, whatever the code is to this does not involve the three, because that's the third gear. So <clears throat> for me looking at this, the farthest one away is the first one. So I'm gonna hit that and watch the gears as I do that. Okay, it moved a little bit. Okay, now the second closest was this one. And if you notice, they're moving closer and closer. The third closest was this one. And the fourth was that one. And now they all line up. So if now, if they would have used, because you know on a simplex, you can enter a two and a three at the same time or a one and a two at the same time. So you can do two numbers at the same time. In that case, you would have to emulate that. If you had two at the exact the same spot, you'd have to find out what in order they hit those two. And then until you get them all to line up like this, and that's how you would figure that out. So, okay. Now that they're all lined up, I believe I'm gonna hit this up here, but let's just double check here. Uh, look at the five gears, any of your pockets, shoe line, and farthest from the shoe line. Okay, already did all that. So now we're gonna go to step number 14, it looks like here. And just real quick while we're at it here, we got our UHS uh, little pin, pinny mat here. Um, they're a sponsor of this video. So if you're looking for any good uh, locksmith hardware, you're in the trade or anything, it's a good supplier to go to, check out UHS hardware. Um, so anyway, so back to this here, if all code gear pockets are not lined up, it's your line, then redo it again. So now that it is correct, you're gonna depress the lockout side, which is this right here. Um, you're gonna press the lockout side at the top of the chamber and release. And it says, uh, looks like one end of a spark plug, okay? So I just hit that and look how it goes into there, see that? And then release. Now they're all, they brought the whole thing down and now it's right in there. And now when you retract, it would pull the door open and unlock because that's what it does right before it unlocks. Okay, so depress the lockout slide at the top of chamber release, got it. Using pliers or equivalent, rotate the control shaft counterclockwise to clear the chamber. So here's the control shaft right here. So I'm gonna take that and it says counterclockwise. But in this case, what's weird is it wouldn't turn counterclockwise a while ago, it only turned clockwise. So remember how I told you this one had different arms? I'm gonna ignore that because it won't turn that way. It only turns the other way, which I know they're just trying to clear it. So I'm gonna clear it. There you go. Now it's cleared, okay? Now it's still all in there because we're in the process of changing this to the code we want it to now. Okay, so rotate the shaft counterclockwise, in this case, clockwise. The lockout side should pop out. It says the lockout slide should pop out. Button underneath will stay depressed. Yeah, this went back up, button stayed depressed. Depress the key stems that you want the combination, that you want in the combination, releasing each after it's depressed. Well, you don't know where this lock's going, so I'll just tell you what code we're gonna use. We're gonna use 154. Okay, I believe that's what the customer wanted. Let me check, yep, 154. So, one, five, four, okay? Once all the digits in the new combination have been depressed with the pliers or equivalent, rotate the control shaft clockwise. In this case, I can only go one way, so. I wonder if it'll go counterclockwise now, just because it's been opposite. It does. So in this case, it's the opposite of the directions they're telling me in here because it's a different set. So once again, if you're not a locksmith, you may have some variables that you might have to determine based off your experiences. So uh, look at the code gear pockets. The numbers in the new combination should not be at the shear line, which they're not, they're all mixed up. So let's see what happens when I do a one, five, four. They all line up, right? So that means we are good. So I'm just gonna emulate as if I was resetting the lock over again. Yeah, and you were set. One, five, four works and we're good. So let's get this back together. So I'm gonna take this, reinsert it back over just like it was. Put that back on there. This has kind of a lip here, I'm gonna put that there. Make sure that's on first, oh, there we go. Pop, 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 good. 
It's just a washer. I'll put that right there for a second and pop that over. Okay, good. That's where it needs to be. These just came off of there, so I'll put the bevel washer down. Just like that, okay? So everything's good right back like it was before. All right, so all I'm gonna do now, take this, put it back just the way I took it out. If you can see in here what I'm doing. I'm just putting the two mounting screws on here that are gonna hold the, the lock body back in place. This was actually easier than the other one with all the the funky arms on it. So I think that might be the difference between, I may be wrong, it's just, I don't do these very often, it's been a while. But it may just be the difference between a, a lever and a, a lever function and a knob function version. So this one I have to get in here, it's kind of tight, so. Let's see if I can, wow, that's gonna be a hard one to get at. Have anything magnetized? Nope. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. Come on, buddy. This is a good little trick if you need to do it. Okay, so now that's back in place. The lock body's back in place. Fortunately, this is way easier than the other one, like I said. So this one I just pop right over sideways here. It should go right back on. There we go. Now we can, let's go ahead and put this back on before we test it. I'm just gonna hold it over it. And even the direction of this matters when you take it off. If you turn this or move this around, you'll sit there for 30 minutes trying to figure out different variations of it. Not something's keeping it a little off here. second something going on so let's see what's pushing the pressure against this nothing's pushing pressure okay Okay, let's see if this works fine. I don't know why I'm getting a little bit of pressure against it. I'm just gonna put one on each corner just to hold it in place and then I'll test this to make sure it works right. Okay, so notice this right here. If I turn the latch, nothing happens, right? because I haven't entered a code correctly. So I should be able to enter 154 and that retract. So clear it, one, five, four, works. So let me put these last screws in. So that's how you uh, reset a simplex chamber, you know, combination pack uh, if needed. Um, like I said, you could uh, replace those if it goes bad. You could also replace the arms. You do need, do need to know what handing it is in order to get a replacement. Uh, we have a video. I can actually have uh, Randall put up a link up here somewhere about how to uh, how to tell what handing your door is because we made a video on how to tell what handing your door is. So if you have any questions as to, well, I don't know what handing mine is, well, you can just watch that video and it'll let you know. So one more screw here and we'll test it one more time just to make sure we're good. And then after that, we'll wrap up the video. All right, so that's the lever's turning. It's not turning the latch in. 
Enter the code, one, five, four. Works good. All right, so uh, that wraps up another video. We appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully you learned something with this. Um, we'll continue to put out more content. We appreciate the support as always. Thanks for tuning in. Please hit the subscribe button. That's, that helps us out the most is hitting the subscribe button. We really appreciate the support on that. And if you would, please hit the bell icon for notifications. That way you know when we're putting out new videos. Uh, don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We're also on two other YouTube channels. We got Udropreneur, U-D-R-O-P-R-E-N-E-U-R. -E -E and we have Guardian Approved. So if, uh, if you don't find what you need on, these, on this YouTube channel, you can check out our other two. We appreciate the support as always, and uh, thanks for tuning in.